Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, obviously I'm filming in a slightly more casual position than I usually do, but I'm laying down with the baby and she's taking a nap and I'm bored and it just seems like a good opportunity to film something even if it's not the preferred way that I like to film. Um, but I promised I would do sort of a little life update just because there's just things that happen and I don't know, I feel like sharing and I feel that they're shareable moments. Um, first of all, I'm sure people that have followed me for a while have noticed that, you know, I haven't been able to upload as many videos as maybe I have in the past or been able to be more interactive on YouTube. Um, I definitely haven't been watching hardly any videos at all. Um, if I do have downtime, uh, I usually... I usually am listening to an audiobook these days simply because that doesn't require me to look at anything and I can still look at the baby and interact with her or do dishes or whatever and it just, I don't know, it makes me feel better about uh, distracting myself with something um, but also interacting with the baby. Maybe that still kind of sounds bad when I put it that way. Um, but yeah, that's... I need something more stimulating though than always sitting on the floor and playing. So that's what I've been doing and that's why you know I haven't been as as active on YouTube or making videos. Um but I just wanted to update on some things uh that have been going on in our life. The main thing being that I have been super busy with a of a little baby and we're in the midst of the summer heat and it's so hot. Um I've mentioned before that our house doesn't have AC. I don't know if you can see our uh, ceiling fan spinning there in the background. The lighting's a little, it might block it out. Oh, maybe you can see it now. That's it. That's all we have are fans, box fans and ceiling fans. And, you know, they don't really do a whole lot of good anyways until the evening time. We can start blowing in that cool mountain air. But I am just so hot. So this is what I mainly have been doing this summer is... Um, napping away the afternoon or at least laying down with a baby um, I put the movie on a movie on for the kids I turn out the lights I try to keep it as just not hot in here as possible um, and I wear the least amount of clothes as possible as does everyone else in our household including the baby so when you're so hot like that I mean the motivation to do stuff is just not there at all um, so as far as homestead related stuff, we do our bulk of our chores or moving goats around or doing whatever um, in the morning and in the evening especially. Um, another fun thing that has happened this summer though is we have added, and I haven't filmed them or showed them um, at all, but we have two new animals on the farm, new animal species, and those are geese. We have geese. We actually found or... We were gifted um, a baby goose uh, back in April. Um, we, The kids found it in the road, and then when I went searching t for who it belonged to, it was our neighbor, and they didn't want it. Um, they were actually going to return it uh, where they had found it, but we decided we would go ahead and keep it, and it has been an awesome little pet. Now it's practically a grown-looking goose, and we got it a friend, so now we have two geese. Now, these are my daughter's very special pets. And because they're so special, you know, we've been really concerned with keeping them safe and, and happy. Um, because she just, she has so attached herself to these birds. She has done all of their care um, and rearing. And she is the reason why they're so tame. And they kind of follow us around like dogs. Um, so, because... These are her super special pets. The next thing I'm going to talk about is super sad. Um, we have two dogs. I don't, I don't remember if I've ever shown them. I know I've shown Wallace, our farm collie. We have another dog that is a blue tick coonhound. We have had a coonhound in the past, and he was great, um, loud, one to run everywhere. But that just comes with the breed. Um, but he was just, other than that, I mean, he was a great dog. Um, and he got along great with everything around here. Um, never tried to attack any of our animals. Uh, so we got another one that was in that same family line. This is actually our old dog's nephew. 
Um, and he is just not the same. He's not the same dog. Um, obviously, you know, you try to recapture some of that when you go with the same breed of dog, but it doesn't always happen. Um, and this dog that we have now is not, we knew he wasn't good with birds. He's killed a chicken in the past, which, I mean, I was ready for him to go then. I mean, when you have a homestead and you have animals um, or a dog that you can't trust to be around your animals, it just makes, it makes life so much more stressful. So we knew he wasn't going to be good with the birds. So we play this little dance of keeping everybody separate. Um, my arm's falling asleep. And it's really uncomfortable. We play this dance of keeping everyone separate. Um, so like we, when the geese are put up, we let the dog out. And he has an invisible fence area of about an acre that he can run on and wander. And, you know, so we don't have to keep him tied up or locked in the house or something. And then when the geese are out, he either goes in his kennel or we tether him. Um, you know, so there's no interaction between them. However... Uh, last week, um, he was let out, and part of our daughter's job is uh, to go ahead and put him on his tether um, when we let the geese out. And she was trying to call him over to come get on the tether, and instead he decided to attack one of the geese. The goose is fine, um, but my daughter, it was very traumatizing for her to watch one of her pets being attacked by another pet and not be able to do anything about it um, because the way they were running around, they, it was just all too fast for her. Um, it was our other dog that actually saved the goose. Um, he's protective of things and he also knows what we expect around here. He's just a huge people pleaser and when he saw that we were yelling at our other dog um, for attacking the goose. I mean, he just ran full on, knocked him off, got in a little fight about it actually. And then um, whenever the attacking dog tried to keep going after the goose, I mean, he just kept blocking him, you know, and getting little scuffles with him to keep him away because he knew, you know, this is part of the rules here is we don't, we don't attack the livestock. And he was trying to enforce that rule. And so I'm really grateful for a good dog like that. Um, but that and the fact that he's um, the dog that attacked the goose, uh, he started becoming aggressive. Like these last few months, for some reason, he's becoming aggressive and harder to handle, and he's growling at everybody. Um, anytime he doesn't want to do something now, if he doesn't want to go in his kennel cage, if he doesn't want to get tied up, um, if you're just scolding him, you know, hey, you know, cut that out, stop chasing this bird or whatever. He just, he growls. And so we can't even, you know, tell him what to do or do anything with him. And we, we've come to the decision that we need to do something about it. I don't know whether we need to find him a new home or, um, I don't know. We, I don't know. It's stressful. Um, it's a little heartbreaking because no one wants to have to do this, do something like this. And I've never had to deal with this type of thing before. So I don't know how to move forward, especially since he started growling at people. Um, I don't know how I feel about rehoming him, um, except to be brutally honest uh, about some of the issues we've been experiencing, of course. Um, but also we don't want to be liable if he continues to escalate in his behavior I don't know. So it's just one of those things. It's just, it's one of those stressful things that's been happening this summer. And moving along with the stress of, you know, things that have been happening in our family, is I, something I've never mentioned before is that my husband um, is epileptic. He has epilepsy. Uh, he was diagnosed with it a couple years ago. It's something that surfaced just all of a sudden when he was 25. Um, he had what's called grand mal or tonic-clonic seizures. About He had three of those. Uh, and those are the kind where you fall down and you shake. And, you know, it's the most intense type of seizures that you can have. Um, he only had three of them, but that's enough to get diagnosed. And then he was put on medication. And he didn't have another seizure for, like, almost two years. And then we noticed in the fall, um, it took us a while to notice, but he was acting funny and spacing out. And 
after some Googling and then talking to his neurologist, of course, uh, we figured out that he was actually having seizures again, but this time they're what's called absent seizures, where um, you kind of just get this blank look on your face. You stare straight ahead. Um, if someone's asking questions, you can't really answer them. You can't take in, in any new information. So what was happening with my husband is like we would be talking, there would be a pause, and then I would ask him a question or something, and then he would just stare blankly at me. And I would ask him again and again, and I would get louder. And the most response I could get back from him was him repeating my question back to me. So if I said, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You know, eventually he would just answer back with me, what's wrong? What's wrong? And sort of just repeating my words back to me, um, which was really scary because he had one actually when he was driving. Um, and I was screaming at him to pull over because I didn't know if he could still drive uh, or function enough to drive. He was able to. Um, however, I learned from his neurologist that um, you can keep stewing, doing the activity you were doing when you have an absent seizure. Uh, however, if anything new is introduced, you won't be able to react appropriately. So if he's driving, he would be able to keep driving like in a straight line or he would be able to continue doing the activity of driving. However, if he encountered a stop sign or a red light or someone walking out into the street, he probably would not react appropriately and just keep driving. So that makes it super dangerous. Um, I forgot to mention um, that before when he had his tonic clonic seizures, um, he stopped driving for six months. After each one, um, we would kind of restart the clock until... He was six months seizure free because you need to be six months seizure seizure free before you can drive again. So, um, my husband started having these absent seizures, um, and they be started becoming more frequent. And then um, we realized he definitely shouldn't be driving. And so I've been driving for our family since maybe I don't know January. Um, once we figured out what was going on and what he was able to do um, and talking to his neurologist. So I've been driving for our family. Um, I drive my husband anywhere he needs to go. Um, he's been working from home. Thank goodness he has a job that allows him to work from home when you need to do that um, because he works mainly on the phone. Uh, so that has been great um, that he has that type of job that we can do that. But it's still really stressful it's just a stressful situation all around. Um, every time he has another seizure, uh, it just resets the clock and it frustrates him because, you know, he's a grown man and he wants to be independent and he wants to drive himself places. And he hates that, you know, I have to, I have to do everything, you know, as far as transportation and he can't even go to the store by himself. You know, I have to take him if he wants to go and we have to just plan it to always be a family outing anywhere we need to go. And losing your independence like that, you know, is really hard. And it's put a lot of stress on our family. But but we're getting through it and over it. And everything is going to be okay. I'm, I'm sure of it. Um, so those are some of the personal things um, that have been going on in our family. I recently uploaded a video about homeschool and updated um, what we're doing as far as that goes. Um, we're continuing to homeschool. However, um... We're definitely taking the summer off, which I hadn't planned to do, but decided to do to just kind of recharge, regroup, and come up with some new plans, which again, I addressed in that video. Um, and this video is taking a long, chatty turn. Um, I think that's all the updates that I have for you guys. I just wanted to do a more personal video, let you guys know, you know, what's going on in our life, because I figure some of you guys want to know, um... And I'm fine with sharing certain things. Uh, but that's it for now. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments down below. It might take me a while. Again, it's just hard for me um, to find the time to interact over social media these days because of the baby. And I want to be present for her. And then in the evening when I have the time, like... I just want to watch TV and eat and relax and have time for myself. But I will eventually get to all questions if you have any questions um, about that. Uh, thank you for sticking with me and watching. And I hope 
this video was enjoyable for you guys and just gave you a little snapshot of our life. I'll see you all again soon, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye!